Hello everybody, it's Fu here and welcome to my week one WBE battle. This is the Pokemon Let's Go Draft League that I've joined. I previously uploaded my draft analysis. If you missed that, I'll leave a link to it in the description. And in this week one, I will be going up against the amazing Hayden and his Colorado Rapid Spins with a very strong roster. So just briefly looking at our drafts, I did see that my Mega Aerodactyl easily outspeeds everything and I can bring it adamant so it will be doing a lot of damage. So my game plan going into this was um, get chip damage on his entire team so that I can go for a late game Mega Aerodactyl sweep. And so with that game plan in mind, let's go and look at my team just before the battle so that I can explain the sets that I brought. If you're not interested in that, then I'll leave a timestamp in the comment section so that you can just skip straight to the battle. So the team I brought, as I said, was built around a Mega Aerodactyl sweeping at the end. That means I'm just going to bring four moves, which two hit KO his entire team, apart from Mega Gyarados. So that's really good. It means that a late game sweep is definitely viable. Just need some of the chip on all of those Pokemon, and I need something to be able to stop Mega Gyarados. So with that in mind, I also brought a Nidoking. This is going to be my Stealth Rocker, and Stealth Rocks are in really, really important. It can't be overstated for getting all the chip damage on his team. So Stealth Rock is gonna be my highest priority. It's also got some really nice coverage move. Earthquake hits most things. Ice Punch hits the Dragonite and Flamethrower hits Tangler. So really good coverage for the team and I'm liking Nidoking a lot in this matchup. The next thing is going to be Poliwath, as I said, I need a really hard switch in to Mega Gyarados and this thing resists both of its stabs, it should be able to tank hits for quite a while, it's got that nice impish nature to make it as defensive as possible. And then its coverage moves are pretty great, Superpower hits a lot of his team for a lot of damage. And then we've just got some other really good coverage moves, I slotted Earthquake on there to be able to hit Alolan Go Golem a bit harder. but. More importantly, Tentacruel, it will do a ton of damage to Tentacruel. So that's Tadswell the Poliwrath. We have then got Vegetrouble the Venusaur. So Venusaur I thought was just a good bring because it was generally quite bulky, um, could take one hit from most things, and it's got the Sleep Powder on there, which is really nice. It gives me a really nice answer to Tangler. And I'm able to slot on Earthquake, so it can act as kind of a lure for Arcanine, which is a big threat to my team. I really don't have many switch-ins, especially considering that I have to preserve Poliwrath and Mega Gyarados. Really not much at all once I switch into the Arcanine, so hopefully I can catch that with some damage there. And then the final two slots on my team, I actually save for some contingency and some offensive Pokémon. Both Electabuzz and Kadabra outspeed Hayden's entire team and can hit it pretty hard. So Electabuzz, four attacks again, hits everything super effectively apart from Arcanine, which is crazy. Um, it's really, really good actually, and two hit KOs the majority of the team. And I really like the look of Electabuzz in this. It also hits Mega Gyarados for some of the most damage on my team. So I think it's going to be really important in this match. And then the last Pokemon is Kadabra. So again, outspeeding everything is great, so it can maybe help clean at the end. The Psychic hits a lot of things for good damage, not super effective against everything, but it's just very powerful. And then Dazzling Gleam catches Mega Gyarados for a decent amount of damage, but not too much. I also slotted Thunder Wave on there because actually I thought that that could be quite an important win condition if I'm unable to sweep with my Mega Aerodactyl at the end, maybe if I paralyze something previously, I can hopefully get some Power Flinch going. I'm really hoping I don't get to that posi position and I've played a bit better throughout the match to prevent having to rely on that, but I thought that it would be an important tool to bring just in case it gets to that. And then the final move is something that I probably won't be using too much. I didn't really need any more coverage, but Substitute is there just to mean that uh, predictions are made a bit easier and also I can avoid a Sucker Punch from a potential Raticate, although that's probably unlikely. So that's Voldespork, the Kadabra. So that's the team. Let's get into the battle and see what Hayden brought. Just a note, I, this is going to be post-narrated just because of the time that I had to record this. I can potentially do live commentary or post narration in the future weeks so let me know in the comment section which you would prefer. So looking at the Pokemon that Hayden brings and I think that they're all really fantastic and scary for my team. Um, we've got the Mega Gyarados there, Arcanine is really hard to switch in on as I said, Dragonite is very scary because it potentially has a strong Aqua Jet to hit my Mega Aerodactyl or it's got agility and could maybe sweep my entire team so I need to be really careful about that Dragonite and then Machamp also is very hard to switch in on. I like the bring of Alolan Sandslash, again the powerful Ice Shard is something I need to bear in mind and it is probably his Stealth Rock of this match. 
and Tangle is the only one I wasn't sure about. I thought that maybe Tentacle would come as a check for uh, Poliwath, although it's not too reliable for that anyway. Um, and then maybe Alolan Golem as a potential uh, rocker to allow Alolan Sandslash to do other things, but um, Tangle is here, I can probably deal with that okay. As I said, Stealth Rock is like the highest priority for me. So that's why I'm bringing Nidoking as my lead. I was hoping that because I put Venusaur in the first slot, it would tempt Hayden not to lead with Mega Gyarados. Um, and maybe bring something that my Nidoking can set up rocks on a bit easier. Maybe something like the Arcanine. Um, but anyway, we'll see as we get into this battle. Um, so, uh, priority, step up Stealth Rock, start getting Chip on the entire team for a late game sweep with Mega Aerodactyl. That is the plan. Um, so, let's see what Hayden brings with, he's got the Pikachu version, very cool, very cool Pikachu actually. Anyways, so he's going to send out his Shrimp, and that's going to be Gyarados, and that's a little bit sad. I was kind of predicting that that might be the case, um, and I definitely want to switch out, but... It's all right because I do have the very good switch in to Gyarados in Poliwrath. So I wasn't too worried if he did bring out Gyarados. I was just hoping that maybe it wouldn't be so I could get my Stealth Rock up. But that's fine. I'll just switch into my Poliwrath and this will give me some really nice information. Um, potentially letting me know if it's adamant or not. Um, if it's adamant, it means that my Venusaur outspeeds because I brought it timid just on the off chance that he didn't bring a jolly Gyarados. So that would be really, really good. So hopefully... Hopefully my Vegetrouble will outspeed the shrimp. So uh, obviously Gyarados is going to Mega Evolve and Poliwrath should be able to tank any hit. Probably going for a Waterfall if he's staying in against a Nidoking and I will resist that and that's actually what we see. So that should be fine. I should be able to tank this for days. But it does a ton of damage. That did so much damage. It is a critical hit on the first turn and that's pretty bad for me because it really limits how good a switch in my Poliwrath is going to be. So I need to be really careful about Gyarados now. I am just going to go for a superpower. Looking at his team, there's definitely not very much at all that will want to take this superpower. Um, it obviously will do a ton of damage to Gyarados, and I really don't want to mess around with Gyarados. Um, and anything else will do a lot of damage. I guess the only thing it w that could take it really well is Dragonite, but any damage on that is helpful because I've said it's a massive threat, could potentially sweep my entire team. So, But actually, Tangler comes in, it is able to eat up that superpower. It does a lot of damage though, and it won't be able to come in on Poliwrath again. Um, but that's fine. And I do have my Venusaur here, which I can switch in very safely, but this is the point where I realise I've got the wrong Venusaur. Why is the Razor Leaf here? Why is the Double Edge? That is not what I planned to bring, and I picked up the wrong Venusaur. I was so, so silly. Um, I was initially going to bring Timid, but then I thought actually Naive is probably as good as anything. He doesn't have many special attackers, and it means that my Earthquake will be doing a bit more damage to things like Arcanine. Um, but this is really bad because I actually don't have anything to hit Tangler. I'm going to switch it in anyway because um, I probably would beat it one-on-one -on -one, seeing as though it's already at half, half health and I do have double edge. Um, but it's really, really bad for me. And Hayden actually predicts that and double switches into his Arcanine which is a fantastic switch. Now. In this position, I really don't have many switches to Arcanine. I can't let my Poliwrath get burned. It's way too important to check the Gyarados. Um, and so because I brought the wrong Venusaur, because it really isn't looking very good in this matchup, I feel much more comfortable being able to make a, an aggressive play like this um, going for the Sleep Powder. With the way that Hayden's been playing, we've seen that he's already made that really hard prediction um, in terms of making the double switch. Hard as in like... Um, brazen just going for it and so I thought he may well make a prediction that I'd switch into something like Poliwrath and go for either a Playwrath or a Will-O-Wisp and that's actually what happens when I get away with that. Now even if he had gone for Flare Blitz there it wouldn't have been the end of the world because he would have taken Recoil and put himself in revenge range of Aerodactyl so actually um, that was not as big a risk as it may have seemed but this puts me so so far in the front I feel because Arcanine was a huge threat to my team and this is so helpful. I've still got a full health Venusaur and it's just so great. Anyway, right now I make sort of a middle play um, going into Nidoking because I thought that maybe Sandslash will come out to deal with my Venusaur because it really does deal with Venusaur very well. Um, but if he stays in to burn some sleep turns with Arcanine, um, equally I've got the Earthquake to hit the Arcanine so um, going into Nidoking was really good here and actually 
I think that it's really obvious the way I'm playing Nidoking King that it's my stealth rocker. I led with it, I'm trying to get it in at any opportunity. So I'm actually going to go for the flamethrower, predicting Hayden to stay in, uh, predicting maybe my rocks or something like that. Um, and just take it out because I know Flamethrower is a one hit KO. Um, so I can do that. I still don't have my Stealth Rock up yet. Um, and I really want to prioritize this at this stage because Mega Gyarados is still at full health and I don't want to have to sack things every time, which is going to be the case soon if Polywrath goes down anytime soon. So. Uh, yeah, that's the the thing that I'm really gonna have to prioritize. But that work, that move with Sand uh, with Sand Slash worked really well for me. He could have switched into Gyarados, um, but I'm really glad that I made that call and, and went for the flamethrower. Um, probably he was staying in either to get his own rocks up or go for the ice punch. Ice punch into ice shard would definitely knock out my Nido King. So uh, if he predicted my stealth rock, then that's probably why he made that play. Anyways, now I can switch into my Poliwrath. Uh, I'm not sure if it will be able to take two Earthquakes, but I think it probably will be able to take two Earthquakes from this Gyarados. And um, as you can see here, the Earthquake does come out, so that was a nice play by uh, Hayden that would have hit my Nidoking and it also hits my Poliwrath. And actually that is a two hit KO. That pretty much, um, it, that probably means that this is an Adamant Gyarados. Probably. Um, I, we're not allowed to do calcs in this lead, so I, I wasn't 100% sure. Um, but what I'm going to do now is just go for the superpower. Um, I wasn't sure if Hayden would stay in or not. He may well not have been sure whether it was a two hit KO. And with damage variation, it's always a bit of a risk. Um, and Gyarados is actually by far his most important Pokemon left because it still is, is pretty much the only thing that can reliably take on my Aerodactyl. Um, but actually he does end up switching out and I can understand that if he wasn't sure that the earthquake would take me out then uh, he wants to switch. I'm, I think it was almost a definite um, take, uh, definite KO at that stage but uh, he may also have been fearing that my Polyrath outspeeds him. I'm not sure if that's possible but he, if he's adamant and I'm jolly I may, may be able to outspeed him. Anyway I get some really nice damage on this Machamp coming in. I don't really have switch-ins and at this stage Poliwrath can't switch in on Gyarados anymore anyway. So I'm thinking I'll just stay in and get a bit more damage on this Machamp because my then either my Electabuzz or my Aerodactyl will be able to take it out and I won't have to rely on Kadabra. Kadabra would Oko it but uh, getting it in this range means that it's, it definitely could be taken out by pretty much anything on my team apart from the wrong Venusaur. <laughs> Venture Trouble, this is why I gave you that name. Why? You are trouble. Why did I bring you? Anyway, at this stage I actually decide to switch into my Nidoking um, because I'm feeling that this is actually a great time to try to get up my Stealth Rock. I'm pretty sure that anything that Machamp goes for will not take me out. I'm actually not sure about that, but I think that anything that Machamp will go for won't take me out because it's not Stab. Um, and I'm still at full health. So if I can get my rocks up here, that will help a lot in terms of starting to chip away at that Mega Gyarados. And also, I need a Stealth Rock hit on the Dragonite for a lot of my coverage moves to be able to take it out. For example, Nidoking's King's um, Ice Punch will only take it out after it's taken Rock's damage. Um, and Rock Slide is not a one-hit KO from Mega Aerodactyl. So I need my rocks up. Um, and I'm thinking maybe Machamp will switch out. It, he could well go into something like um, maybe Tangler. Unlikely. It will probably be more of a sack if he did that because obviously I, I could have poison type moves and he's already seen the flamethrower, which would take it out. Or he could go into Mega Gyarados, but he does stay in. I, I think that was probably the best play on his part because uh, Machamp isn't going to be too useful for much else. And um, yeah, it won't be able to, it, pretty much my entire team outspeeds it. So uh, at this stage, getting damage on the Nidoking King is, is definitely his best play. And I was able to take that quite comfortably, actually. I was surprised that, that it didn't um, get me down even further. But yeah, I, I was happy that I could easily survive that. And I'm pretty sure Earthquake is a KO here. So I'm just gonna go for that. And nothing really switches in. Now I've got rocks up. Uh, rocks into Ice Punch would take out Dragonite. So I can take out the Machamp. Very good, very good. And at this stage, uh, I'm, I'm looking pretty nice. I've still got all of my fast Pokemon left. So I think I've probably got enough Pokemon um, to, to close this out. But I'm still very scared about that Dragonite. I still don't know if it's got like a powerful Aqua Jet, which, would, which still threatens my fast sweepers. Or if it's actually an agility set. If it's agility, that could be like a really, really, really big problem. 
So I'm just going to go for an Earthquake here on the Mega Gyarados because I, I need to start getting chip on this and Nidoking, King, um, it's, it's, his job is pretty much done. He's got the rocks up, he's done quite a lot of damage already. He's already got two KOs and got rocks up, so that's really good. Um, so I'm just going to get, get some damage on this Gyarados, but Hayden actually switches into Arcanine, maybe predicting my switch into Gar uh, to Venusaur on the Gyarados, um, hoping to get some sleep turns off. Uh, which is a reasonable play, although I think that Hayden could probably have waited, gone for an Earthquake or a Crunch or something, to see if I did go into Venusaur and then switch into Arcanine, um, rather than switching hard into it, um, because there was a chance that I would stay in like that and, and get rid of Arcanine. Um, so that works out pretty well for me, because it means that Garado takes two turns of chip damage with the rocks, and Arcanine has gone. Like, I can see that at this stage, um, hoping for uh, a bit of a, a misplay on my part like that would have been a uh, reasonable play by him. So if I had switched into Venusaur and he managed to get some sleep turns off, then Arcanine is a, is a much, much bigger problem to me. Um, only my Aerodactyl can really deal with it at that stage and pressuring that to come in is, is not very good for me. Uh, but anyway, my... Nidoking goes down there to the uh, Gyarados' attack, but I have got really nice damage on that Gyarados now, and I've actually put it in range of my Electabuzz. And Electabuzz is looking great here, because I can go for a Thunderbolt and pretty much guarantee myself a KO. Um, I definitely two-hit KO the Tangler, and I'm pretty sure I two-hit KO the uh, Dragonite 2. I outspeed everything at this stage, so Thunderbolt basically guarantees me uh, a knockout, which is great. Um, so Tesla is Tesla is going to do a lot of damage to the nudes. Uh, that was a resist, but it really isn't a resist. I'm guessing that Hayden knew that, and this was a sack at this stage because um, he doesn't have a great choice of sacks. And I can just go for another Thunderbolt, take this out, and that means that we will finally see Dragonite. Now the way that Hayden's played it, keeping it in back until this this part of the game definitely makes me feel that it is a win condition for him, which makes me feel like it's an agility set, which is scary. I do have the Ice Punch though, and, I'm, I, and I just don't know if it's going to take it out after Stealth Rock. I actually am very doubtful that it will, because Electabuzz doesn't have the highest attack stat, it's not Stab, it's quite a low base power move, I'm really not sure that this will take it out. It should do a lot of damage, but it's going to be close. Now let's see if it does, <laughs> no, it's left on about like 3 HP, and it does get an agility off, and this is when the clenching starts, because it's getting quite close now. Um, this Dragonite, I have no resist to its move, I have no priority on my team, it will outspeed even my Mega Aerodactyl, so this is really not good at all. The Earthquake comes out showing me that it's most likely a physical variant because Dragonite can run some special sets. Um, and at that stage I definitely just wanted to sack my uh, Electabuzz, there was nothing else I can really do. Now I, I, I could try to go into Mega Aerodactyl or Venusaur, either of which I think should be able to take a hit, but I'm not exactly sure and it really depends on what other moves this Pokemon has. Um, I go into my Venusaur and go for a double edge. Now if this was an agility roost set, this could have been a big problem because I doubt the double edge is doing over 50% to a Dragonite and if he had roosted up, that could have been a real problem. Uh, obviously I could have played around with Sleep Powder there, but um, I definitely think that going for double edge was my play on that turn. Luckily I live, luckily this stupid Venture Trouble pulls through um, by living that hit. It does actually have perfect IVs. This is a different Venusaur that I had prepped but just hadn't given the right moves. So fortunately it is able to live that attack. And I'm just going to go for the Razor Leaf here, hoping to get some damage because I am a plus speed nature. And I do actually outspeed the Gyarados despite it having a higher base speed. So obviously it's an adamant rather than jolly or anything like that. And Razor Leaf is actually able to take it out, which I didn't think it would be able to do because I thought Giga Drain did less damage than that. But uh, Mega Gyarados is actually bulkier on the special side. Um, but I had, as, as long as I could take out the Dragonite, I had plenty to deal with that Gyarados at the end. I had Dazzle and Gleam on Kadabra. I had, I still had a full health um, Aerodactyl in the back. Um, but that was, that's that. So uh, I think that went really well for me. It was a really good game and Hayden played really well. Um, he was predicting me at the beginning, which is great. Um, but bringing the wrong Venusaur actually was uh, worked slightly in my favor just in that I was able to make more aggressive predictions. And because it wasn't as important to me, I was able to make, uh, I basically use it 
uh, as a sack and risk it a bit more. And Hayden wouldn't have predicted that because he didn't have that information. He didn't know what was going through my head in that time. So uh, sacking the Venusaur like that or using it so recklessly seemed a bit silly. Um, but at the same time, I do think it was one of the least useful members of my team. Even if I brought the right one, um, it can it can live some hits, but at the same time, it, it it's not very it's not a reliable check to anything other than Tangler, which I can deal with a number of other ways anyway. Um, it can't switch in on Mega Gyarados a lot. If that, if that had been a jolly Mega Gyarados, I think Mega Gyarados still can 2 it KO it and outspeed and 2 it KO. So it doesn't really reliably check anything, but it was able to take that one hit and go from there. Uh, so GG to Hayden, thank you very much for the game. And uh, I, th I really enjoyed this one. And what I really enjoyed about it was how the team worked. It's a very aggressive team. Uh, and it's got a lot of offensive power. I really liked Electabuzz, especially in prep, just looking at the counts of Electabuzz. It's a really cool Pokemon with surprising coverage, so I'm looking forward to using that a bit more. Anyway, that's all for this week. We go into next week with one win under our belt, which is always a comfortable position to be in. Um, definitely go and check out Hayden's side of the battle. I really, I need, still need to find out what some of his sets were. It could be that that Dragonite set was much closer to sweeping me than I actually realized. Um, but yeah, definitely go and check that out. All the links will be in the description. That's all for me. Thanks very much for watching. I've been Fu, you've been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Goodbye.